Hi, I'm Pastor Brad from His Outpouring Church. I want to personally invite you to come to His Outpouring Church this Saturday at 6 p.m. We meet off Center Court inside the East Ridge Mall in Casper, Wyoming. Every Saturday at His Outpouring Church, you can expect the presence of God to touch your life in a new way. You may give a prophetic word or solution to a problem or experience healing. There's a great environment for kids and an encouraging message for you. Maybe you've been looking for a church or maybe not. Either way, we really want to see you at His Outpouring Church this Saturday evening. Come explore faith and meet some great people in the process. I cannot wait to see you at His Outpouring Church in East Ridge Mall this Saturday at 6 p.m. There we go. Okay. All right. You guys ready? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed Brad to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent Brad to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion. Okay, hang on for a minute. I just saw something. Go back to two. I've only said this how many times? I just saw this. To comfort all those who mourn. Who could that be? It could be anybody, right? Okay, now look at the next line. To console those who mourn in Zion. To console the Christians who are. <laughs> that's pretty good. It's right there, isn't it? You know, when we get to heaven and we get in front of Jesus, I'm just going to lay as flat on the ground as I can and not say a thing. Because he's going to say, what would you do with my word? I'm going to lay down as flat as I can. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to just sprawl out. <laughs> Where's St. Peter? All right, next one. To give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Hey, Rich, would you, would you put your hand on David's back? And would you, Tiffany, would you put your hand on Rachel's back? Because um, his sister just died. David's sister died. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the run that she had. And, Father, we thank you that as she graduates to the next kingdom, yeah. Father, we are excited for her. Because she's not coming back. She wouldn't want to. And so, Father, we just thank you for the time she was on this earth. We thank you for the fact that, that she was a sister of David. We thank you for the fact that, that Father, that, that she was in your will and in your family. And Father, we just, uh, we just appreciate that. We thank you for it, and we just release her in Jesus' name. And Father, we just thank you for David and Rachel. We, just, uh, we are so happy that they are here with us, and we just, uh, we just thank you that they're part of our congregation, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, here we go. Let's go to Joshua 1, chapter 1. So this is where Moses, which I just finished the book on Moses, so... It's, it's, it's interesting how much Moses, um, Moses is, is the prototype for Jesus. And it's interesting because Moses does it in the Old Covenant and gets better results than we do in the New Covenant. But he's the example of how you go into the Holy of Holies, and this time how you take access and advantage of the Holy of Holies. So instead of just like back in the day, remember you had to have bulls and goats, the blood of bulls and goats to go into the most holy place? Because remember, they had the tent of meeting, you had the outer court, you had the court, and then you had the, inner, you had the Holy of Holies. And what Jesus did is he just, he just gave us a way to go in and out of that. And Moses learned how to hear the Holy Spirit, oh, which was the Father, and to do what the Father told him to do, which is the same thing that occurs to us whenever we go into the most holy place. Now, did Moses do it right? Every single time. How many times did he miss it that, uh, that you guys can count? I count three times at least. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. She said those are the times that, that uh, we know about. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, here we go. So what he's doing is he's talking to Joshua. So Moses could not go into the promised land. And here's my $2 opinion about it. God took him up there and showed him the promised land and said, you're not going. But I don't think Moses cared. I don't. I think he thought, 40 years have been a good, long run. I'm, <laughs> I'm good to go. <laughs> I'm ready to go to heaven, right? Because he had to take him. Moses wouldn't, he couldn't die. Remember, he was in the glory all that time. So God just said, your time's over. Boom, I'm taking you. And he made 120, and the dude could still jog. He could still do three and push-ups a day. 
He could still do hit training. He was in great shape. How come he was in great shape? Because he was in the glory. Do you know the scripture says that we're supposed to make the heathens jealous? I'll stop. I'm not going to meddle tonight. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun. Now, Joshua was not Catholic. So Joshua, what did Joshua do? How many, how many nations did Joshua defeat? Who knows? 31. Who, who, who went out and defeated two more? Who defeated the other two? Was it Caleb? No, I think it was Judah. Wasn't it Ju- yeah, it was Judah. Yeah, we had 33. Now, isn't that interesting? We defeated 33 countries. How long did Jesus live? How many countries did they leave out? About 13. So the Philistines, the, uh, all, all those other people, if, if Judah would have gone on in and finished up what Joshua had done, we wouldn't have had to mess with all this. But guess what? They made treaties with them, yeah. They tried to negotiate with them. I have to tell you something. You can't negotiate with sickness, disease, the devil, the enemy, anything. You can't. Because he won't, he won't keep his end of the bargain. All right. So, 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 so this is very significant. Look here. Moses' assistant saying. And, you know, you, know, you know, Gene likes to talk about a lot, but Moses stayed in, in the temple, right? Or he stayed in the tent. But Joshua, you know, Moses would come out again because he had duties. He had to do funerals and stuff. But Joshua stayed in. He never came out. Do you see the significance of that? What does that mean? How do we make that work today, though? Do we, do, do we stay camp down here all the time and, and uh, don't go to work? That'd be kind of hard. Some of you guys are going to get fired if you do that. But you stay in by having an awareness of him. I mean, do you guys think about the Holy Spirit during the day? I mean, I mean, whenever you have a situation, do you stop and ask him what he thinks? Or do you, or do you call your pastor or do you call a friend or do you... Or do you call the doctor or something like that? Or, or do you look at your checkbook and, and it dictates what you're able to do? But I'm really meddling again, aren't I? Dang it. See, Rich, I vowed not to do it, and here I go. All right, next verse. Moses, my servant, is dead. Duh. But you have to understand this. Your old man is dead. Why do we keep trying to resurrect him? Because scripture says, unless a seed goes into the ground and dies, it will not produce fruit. So the reason the Holy Spirit wants you to keep that old man there is he's taking that seed, which is your old man, and creating something new. So why would we dig that up? He sure does, doesn't he? He sneaks, he's a robber and a thief. He comes in through the fence and he goes, did God say? What did you guys think about a couple of weeks ago? What was it last week? When, do you remember, um, the snake came into the garden and defeated Adam? Remember that? And was that true? He defeated Adam. And then, and, then, and then Eve was the result of it. Eve was the result, because whose responsibility was it? It wasn't Eve's, it was Adam's. Whenever she said, hey, let's eat of this fruit, what should he have said to her? <laughs> Let me ask you something. Have you ever had anybody say, hey, let's go smoke a joint? And you're like, where are you, where are you going to go? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm really meddling now. <laughs> I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody. If you think I am, I'm not. I'm too tired. <laughs> too tired to care tonight. Um, so anyway, but wasn't it cool how, how Judas, who was possessed by the devil, because it said that the devil entered his heart, and Jesus said to him, go do what you're going to do. He was, talking to, he was talking to the devil, not Judas. And he goes, go do what you're going to do. So, so the devil, he is so, he is so vain. Like he's like that Carly Simon song, you're so vain. He just came up and kissed Jesus like I whipped you once before, and I'm going to do it again. 
Are you saying that he's that delusioned? Yes, he's that delusioned. And Jesus says, I am he that you're looking for. And everybody fell out. Remember that? That's in John 20, John 18. That's the first sign that we have. Well, not the first sign, but New Testament sign of people being slain in the spirit. Now, can you imagine that arrogant devil just got put on his rear end? For real. Yeah, hallelujah. And I think at that point, that's when he left Judas, and Judas came to himself and goes, what have I done? I mean, how would you feel? Anyway, isn't that good, though? The Bible is chocked full of those kind of examples that we, that we can't walk past. If you see, uh, let, let me keep going. All right. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over Jordan, you and all the people to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Now, what is this the prototype of? Joshua could stand for Jesus, right? And he's going over the Jordan, which is into the promised land, which is the promises that we have. He's leaving the old land and going into the new land. He's leaving the old man and coming into the new man. He's getting rid of the old habits and coming and getting new habits, right? So whenever he goes over, he's going to take people with him. Now, now, now what's cool, cool with this is that all the people that he takes would also signify the promises of God. He doesn't go with, it with just a flashlight and a piece of duct tape. Come on. He's got two million people or a million and a half people. I mean, I was talking to Bob Decker about this one day. He says, can you imagine having, whenever they camped, it was like the size of Casper. And you got, you have probably, I don't know how wide they'd be from here all the way to Douglas, just coming. That's a lot of folks. I mean, Jesus, the, the Holy Spirit does not have limited thinking. Because remember about three weeks ago, we talked about time, space, and matter. Because if you don't care about time and space, it doesn't matter. Time, see, the, everybody look at the clock, look, look at your watches, that's time, right? Okay, you're all sitting in a chair, feel around, are you in a chair, that's space, and then this is matter, right? Now, he's off that realm, right? Is he in this realm, or is he in the glory realm? He's in the heavenly realm, right? And, and there, Kenny, Steve can be six foot tall, but I can also make him 60 foot tall. Has anybody ever seen a big angel? Yeah. yeah, there's no time and limit in the spirit, is there? The time and limit is here. So that's why he's trying to get us to cross the Jordan, to cross over the Jordan, and to get into that realm where our thinking is different. You see that? Or is everybody seeing that? Yes. Okay, who's not seeing it? I know one of you guys is not seeing it. Where this old thinking is replaced with him and his thinking. So he's changing our thinking for his thinking. Because our thinking is flawed. So if you want a renewed mind, because see, this has really gotten off. The person that can quote the most quips, the most platitudes, and has the most verses memorized has a renewed mind. No. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Have you ever had that guy back in college that acted like he knew everything? Yep. So whenever the police came and you tried one of those techniques and it didn't work, remember that? <laughs> That's kind of like how your mind is. So I want to go over the Jordan, and I want to get his mind. So a renewed mind would be what? Single-minded to what? To God, whatever he tells you to do, yeah. That's why Jesus had a renewed mind, because he says, I don't think of anything on my own. What the Father says, I do. Whatever he tells me, I go and do. Whatever I, I see him do, that's in, that's in John 12. Okay, next verse. Ooh, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I've given you, as I said to Moses. How many, how many of you guys have quoted this for years and years and years? And I can remember one day, I bought a house in Tulsa, and we were the third person on the contract. Two, uh, two people in front of us had already put in a, 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 a bid on the house. And the Lord said, I want you to take Joshua 1-3, and I want you to walk around the house, 
and I want you to say this, this, and this. Now, that's weird, isn't it? But I did it. And it was real weird because the first person fell out. The second person wanted a French drain. Does anybody here know what a French drain is? Okay. A French drain is, well, forget it. You have to look it up. (laughs) It was 800. I'm about to talk about French drains. It was $800. And I said, shoot, I can handle that. And we had that house. The Lord did it. That was the beginning of him teaching me how to do what he's bidding me to do. See, most people won't go do that, or a lot of people won't go do that. Like on the house we're in now, I I told you guys the story. I melted down because I was a mortgage banker for years, and I knew too much about mortgage loans. And the way our mortgage loan was coming apart, our debt-to-income ratio was off. didn't make any sense to me. And then the enemy comes and says, if you wouldn't have been full-time, and take it a limited salary, and if you'd have had a real job like normal people, blah, 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 blah. Have you ever had that happen to you, Steve? He's just coming visiting you? Who said no? She, well, because well, you're telling it to leave. So the Lord said, go speak to the house. So that's what I did. And he said, then shut your mouth and quit talking about it. So see what he, see, what he did is, he gave me a seed. Go speak to the house. Right? So I did it. I put the seed in the ground. The ground's my soil. It's how I think. For some reason, that portion of soil, if your soil is rocky and stony and full of thistles and it's hard and God puts seed in, don't talk. Because if you talk, if you start talking about it, you're the one uncovering the seed, not him. You're the one pulling it out of the ground. How do you know? Because I pulled the seed out of the ground too many times. Well, what's that doing there? Oh, you pulled it out. Oh, my gosh. But Billy's right. You speak to it. Whenever the enemy comes, what did Jesus say? It is written. Yeah. Next verse. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. Remember that? From the going down of the sun to the... No, you don't remember that one? Okay. I grew up in church all my life. From the wilderness and this Lebanon as far as the great river. What's he, what's he showing him? What's he showing Joshua? Borders. What borders? His borders. His borders to what? Land. Very good. That's right. Has the Holy Spirit ever showed you the borders of your promised land? Mm, Have you ever had the gift of faith come on you? Have you ever had it happen to where all of a sudden all things are possible? Like, man, this is easy. It's like, it's just, it's like, wham, it lands on you. It's it's not you, it's him, right? You know what you do when that happens? You jump on it. (laughs) You do exactly what he says. You got an open window there. You better take it. Is everybody following me? Okay, next verse. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Now, I, I'm going to change this. So he's talking about an enemy, enemy, an enemy in the promised land, right? Not an enemy, an enemy in the promised land. So, so, so who could be our enemy in our promised land? Who could be the bully in our promised land? Ourselves. What else? You got to say it louder. Say it, say it again. So, your mind, okay, that's two, two of your minds. What else? What else, Steve? And don't say your wife, anybody, or your husband. Circumstances. And so, and so look what the Lord says here. As I was with Jesus, so will I be with you. I'll not leave you nor forsake you. Isn't that what he's saying? He was with Jesus, he's with us. He was with Moses, he was with Joshua. So I, I have something in my body. Something comes up. So what do I do? What's the first thing I do? Do I start proclaiming? What do I do? What do I do, Billy? Go to the Holy Spirit. What do I ask the Holy Spirit? What do I do with this thing? Well, wait a minute, brother. The Word says this, this, and this. I know it does. But I want a custom job. I want a job just for me. I, you know, I don't want to buy something off the shelf. I want a custom. Has anybody ever had a tailored suit? You ever heard of a... You ever heard of an Oxford suit, O-X-X-F-O-R-D? That is the heaviest suit you'll ever feel. Back in the day, they were 2000 bucks a suit. 
back in the 80s. And you'd feel that suit. Man, the thing was so heavy. You could just feel it. The quality of it, the craftsmanship, the single needle tailoring, the floating chess piece, the fact that back here it didn't lob up. It fits you like a glove. And you held that heavy suit. And the minute you put that suit on, it disappeared. It was gone. How come it was gone? Because it fits you just right. <laughs> you know, you can tell when somebody has an expensive suit, they keep their suit on. When somebody doesn't, they take their coat off. You can, you can watch it, man, they loosen that tie and they pull off that suit. You know, I was in the business too many years. Holy Spirit's like that. He's trying to give us a, a custom suit job. I'm, I'm struggling with syllables tonight, aren't I? Coost him and boost him and hoost him and everything else. <laughs> What's that? I was in the gym, yeah. You ever tried to yell in the gymers? Everybody listen right now. Oh, I can't do that. But anyway, nix that. I'm more in the spirit than here right now. It's kind of crazy. Uh, okay, brain, come back. Um, so anyway, he does the same thing for us. He wants to give us a custom suit. Okay, so for some of you car enthusiasts, he wants to give you a 55 Chevy with a 327 with a Holly double pumper, blah, 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 or whatever. See, see, here we go. See, 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 see how it happened? See right there? You see that? <laughs> so you see what I'm talking about. That's a custom job. What do you want? You want a 69 GTO. I could start this. You know, I, I could go all the way through this, right? Okay. See, there we go. The Holy Ghost will give you a 67 GTO in faith if that's what you want, if that's what you're looking for. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to be redundant. But you guys can see this right here. That was a, lot, that was a melanoma. And I remember when it came up. Oof. Mm. And I remember the devil saying, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You teach faith. You're a big faith man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he showed me visions of my funeral. Now, I'm not advocating anything, and I'm not jumping on anything. I just want you to hear what he was doing to me, not you. Just listen to me. You stick your 67 GTO in. I'll stick in a, oh, I don't know, a Bentley. There we go. <laughs> so, so that was me. And you guys have probably heard the story, but I, I look at it, and I'm like, ooh, what do I do? And he said, listen to Kenneth Hagin healing tapes. So my mind immediately said, I've been in Tulsa for 27 years. I've been in Kenneth Hagin's house, blah, 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 right? And I keep going. So the next morning I wake up, and it looks really bad. And I go, what do I do? And he goes, listen to Kenneth Hagin healing tapes. And I'm like, okay. But I was in Kenneth Hagin's house. I did this. So what am I doing? I'm pulling the seed back up out of the ground. And God in his graciousness gave it to me three times. He put it back in again. He put it back in again. He put it back in again. For Jesus, how many times do you have to tell him? Once. Third time, I love how he talks. He says, I figured if I wanted to live, I would probably go listen to Kenneth Hagin healing tapes. And I thought, you know, I think I'll go listen to Kenneth Hagin healing tapes. <laughs> <laughs> and I listened to 300 of them in two months. 300 of them. So why would he have me do that? I, so, I, I just so immersed myself that there's no way I could look back at circumstances. I had to stay in them, had to stay in it, had to stay in it, had to stay in it. And I, and I was so determined that he, would, he brought all kinds of people across my path. And he told me, only have two people pray for you. And that's all I did. No one knew what I was going through. This is me. These are the things he told me to do. Not you, me. And, and as I did that, it took exactly 60 days for healing to come. Another time, the devil tried to put a heart attack attempt on me when I was 39. And he gave me different instructions then. See, you're in a different place. Every time something occurs, you're in a different place. What is he doing here? No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Who was the man trying to stand before him? The melanoma cancer. The heart attack attempt. You know, the house getting foreclosed. See, I know what that's like. That's real fun, getting your house foreclosed. 
I know what it's like to ha not have enough money and you're having all the Sunday school kids come over to swim in your pool and your pool looks like, uh, like uh, what's that? What's that uh, it looks like a Glendo or something. Glendo's fine for a lake. It ain't great for a swimming pool. It's not. So what do you do? You got 30 minutes before they get here. I went and asked Holy Spirit, what do I do? And he, and he, and he instructed me on how to do that. So what I'm saying to you is I go back to him continually on everything. You want, you want more scripture? In John 12, you're going to get it anyway. In John 12, no, John, John 11, Jesus is standing there. Mary comes up and says, what do I do? And Mary runs back into the house. Mary is the soul, soul to soul, right? Martha, Martha thank you. M Martha is standing there going soul to soul. Jesus stands exactly where he was. Until Mary comes, who is our renewed mind or our spirit, comes and says, what do I do? And God told her what to do, and, and, it, and it happened. Jesus is, is standing exactly at the last place where he gave you the last set of instructions. He hasn't left. Because he's faith. He's not going to move with you if you're not in faith. And see, you know what he's wanting right now out of us, guys? He's wanting a today revelation, not a yesterday See, it's great that, the, it's great that God fed 5,000 last week, but how about this week? How about next week? How about your faith grows to the point where now I'm not only feeding me, but I'm feeding a whole bunch of people? How about it comes to the point where I don't have to believe God anymore? I've got so much money coming in that I can, I can start financing things. Or whatever. Next verse. Be strong and of good courage. Woo, glory to God. Now, how do you be strong when all the circumstances are saying, you're going down. Hallelujah. You've, heard, you've never heard circumstances say that? <laughs> You're going down. You imagine stuff at work. Or, <laughs> or stuff just happens. What do you do then? He, he tells you to be strong and of good courage. So let me ask you this. Remember, whenever we talk about good and evil, we're talking about walking single-minded compared to double-minded. Jesus went about doing good, meaning he heard what Holy Spirit told him, and he was, he was healing the sick, he was casting out devils, he was changing his region because he was doing good. He heard what the Holy Spirit said. That's when you're doing good. You do what Holy Spirit tells you to do. This is telling you, be strong and of good courage. So you know what that says to me? Who gives you the courage, you or Jesus? Jesus. We're going to use his courage, not ours. If you take my courage, you can be strong. And the strongest word in this whole verse is what word? What's the strongest word? Who wants to pick it? Inheritance. What else? Who else? What's that? Swore. Shall. What else? You want, you want my opinion? How do you be? Remember when you were a kid and you're living in your parents' house and you said, hey, I'm your child. I'm going to go get a sandwich out of the refrigerator. What did your mother do? Are you weird? If you did it every day, remember, did you ever go to your mom and say, hey, mom, I'm your child. I want to just give you, I want to tell you, see, look here. You have to feed me. You, 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 you have to make my clothes. You have to do this. What would your mother do? She would put you in, a, she would put you in a Dean Morgan probably. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. But you don't go around quoting to your mother that you're their child, do you? What do you do? You go eat. And if you miss it, what does your mother do? Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to your fathers to give to them. If you don't have faith, I'll lend you my faith. If you don't have courage, I'll lend you my courage. If you're afraid, I'll give you my strength. See, when we say we lay our burdens, what does that song go? We lay our burdens down, I surrender, I'm going to make room for you. What's he talking about? He's talking about letting him make room, right? Isn't that true? Be strong and of good courage. And if you have no courage, I'm going to give you courage. If you're not strong enough, I'm just going to let you be, and I'm going to teach you by hanging around with me what it means to be strong, because I'm strong. The secret to this whole thing, you ready? Is hang around with Jesus all the time. And how do I do that? I stay aware of him. 
at all times. That's why you fast and pray and seek God. Um, Karen made a really good point. Do you remember when... No, I'm going to get off that. Okay, next verse. Because I'm meddling tonight, and I don't like it. Only be strong and very courageous. Now, wait a minute. He just told us to be. Now he's telling us only to be strong. Now, what the heck is that? Is he contradicting himself? How about this? Only be. And then the strength and the courage comes. That you may... So once I know that the Holy Spirit has me, see, see, those who believe that w without faith, it's impossible to please God. So this whole thing is faith. Whole thing is faith, right? Without faith, it's impossible to believe God. For those who come to God, first one is you've got to have faith to believe. The second one is you come to God, right? What does that mean? Does it mean that you're handling yourself or you're going to God? I want, I want to go to God. So you have to have faith. You come to God, and you have to what? That Believe is. that he is. And. and he's a rewarder for, of what? Of those, five. What's the last one? Seven points. Wow, you guys are good. That's his perfect number. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to a little bit of the law. All the law. Now let's stop right there for a minute. Is it only this? Is it only this? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, we're done. Let's take the offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. That was worth the price of admission. <laughs> yes. He doesn't know what he did, so don't tell him. So. <laughs> but if the <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, I worship you. If the Holy Spirit talks to you and gives you something, <laughs> oh, hallelujah, that you may observe to do according to all, however he got it to you, <laughs> be it the New Testament or the Old, a GTO or a Camaro, whatever, that you're able to do what he says. So, <laughs> woo, so, years, so years ago, who, who has no idea what's going on? Raise your hands. Okay, glory. There's, okay, there's two honest ones. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, glory. Hallelujah. Father, we just worship you. Let's just worship God for a minute. Father, we just worship you. Father, we just bless you. Father, we thank you. We just thank you, Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to... <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to do everything he says, <laughs> whatever that is. So years ago, one day the Lord said to me, he goes, I want you to go and take Steve for lunch. So I go call Steve. I go, Steve, let's have lunch. He goes, I can't do it. I went, oh my gosh, I didn't hear God. And then I, and then I hear God as I'm driving off saying, on Tuesday... And it's Monday. Okay. Now, how many are guilty of that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Be very strong and very courageous that you, that you, 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 not somebody else, you, may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or from the left hand that you may prosper wherever you go. So what's he talking about there? Don't go to the left or the right. What's he talking about? Yeah. Any of that, right? Following him, exactly. 
So think about that for a minute. We're going to stay on the path that the Holy Spirit has told us, right? And we're not going to be diverted by anything. We're not going to be diverted by anything. Come on now. Especially our circumstances. We're not going to be diverted by anything. Hmm. Hallelujah. Do not turn from the right hand or the left that you may prosper wherever you go. If you're struggling and not prospering, I will assure you that we're doing some of this. We're doing some of this. If you're not getting an answer, stop. Remember that game, freeze? What was that game? Was it freeze tag? Yeah, you had to freeze. That's what we all need to do. We need to, need to stop. Because the more we walk, the worse it gets. Because if you're walking in the wrong direction, you keep walking, what happens, David? You're more lost. Is that good grammar? You're lost or more. <laughs> it's freeze tag. Because I got to tell you, if you're lost in the woods, what do you do? Walk around in circles? What do you do? Hug a tree. Hey, no politics, okay? <laughs> what, you hug a tree. Why is that? You stay put so they can come find you, right? Have you ever tried to find somebody and they go, they're in the kitchen. So you go to the kitchen. Oh, they just left you. They're here and you go like that. That's how we are with God. Where'd you go? What'd you say again? Oh, okay, yeah. Boy, that was a good sermon. I love that sermon. Oh, John said this. Ooh, I'm, oh. I read that in the book. Ooh. So what are you doing? You're playing Twister. Anybody play Twister? <laughs> you're straining, and you're in weird positions, and you can't figure it out. It's Spiritual Twister. We ought to call that a series, right, Rachel? Spiritual Twister. <laughs> B21. No, it's bingo. All right, next one. <laughs> this book of the law shall not depart out of your pie hole, but you shall... Meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. So it's this, New Testament and Old. It's what Holy Spirit tells us, right? It's, 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 it's what the council said. That's why if anybody tells me they have a situation, the first thing I say is, what has the Holy Spirit told you? So now, this book of the law, the thing the Holy Spirit told you shall not depart from your mouth. Have you ever met somebody who said, you said, how you doing? I'm healed. Or how you doing? Hearing God. Or they'll leave, or I'm set free, or I'm whatever, right? You ever had that occur? Have you done it? Whew. I know this is a new verse you guys have never read here. According to all that's written therein, for then you will make your and you and on and on and on. So this book of the law shall not depart from your, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Gosh, I wish there were seven. Have I missed it? You guys count them. Is that six? Six times it says you. Six times. So do we do something on this thing? We make room. See, okay, so let's get back to that song again. I'll make room for you. Do whatever you want to. Okay, great. I want you to start praying four hours a day. Whoa, hang on. Hallelujah. Wait a minute. Four hours? Kenny doesn't have to pray four hours a day. He only prays three. What are we doing? We're negotiating already. Do you see that? That's, I'm talking simple things like that. Or God tells you to do something, and you think, you know, I did it, but I'm okay. I'm not going to do it now. I mean, I did it once, but I'm not going to do it again. Why do you keep preaching about this? Because this is the biggest problem in the body of Christ. It's not the devil. It's the fact that we don't do what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. It's that simple. That's it. He cares about every single thing we do. Next verse. Have I not commanded you? Here we go again. So, so where's he telling us this from? What verse was that, Judy? Do you remember? Be strong and of good courage. Wasn't that, what, the first or second one, right? He's going back and he's reiterating. He's Jehovah repeater. Yeah. Because we need it. 
He's Jehovah Repeater. Have I not commanded you? Be strong. Did I, did, I, did I tell you that? Didn't I tell you to be of good courage? If you're strong and of good courage, are you going to be afraid? Dismayed. Somebody look up the word dismayed. That means you're making dumb decisions, I believe, right? You're confused. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I'll not leave you and I will not forsake you. I'm with you wherever you go. So if I'm dealing with something right now in my life, right? So let's take my son. My son passed away early. He was 24 years old. And there was only a few people that had the guts to say to me that I miss God. But they couldn't talk after that. Now I'm teasing. Some people, just let them talk. Just let it go. Because the worst thing you can do is get in the middle of it. So, the Lord, I, I went to the Lord. I go, what do I do with my son? He said, do this and this. Hardest thing I ever did. Hardest thing I ever did. So, so when I did it, then he told me, if he doesn't shift, I'm going to do this. Which messed with my religion. Somebody here is going to... St- some of you are going to struggle with what I'm going to say, but it just is what it is. The interesting thing about crisis and Jesus coming is he messes up your belief system sometimes. And the reason we don't have revival is we believe Christian fables. And the people that offer the most Christian fables are ourselves. <laughs> the Lord told me. The Lord, Go read Jeremiah chapter 23, and the Lord told you. Because usually when the Lord tells me, it freaks me out totally. Usually, I'm like, I can't afford to do that. <laughs> Here's what it usually is. I don't want to do that. That's a pretty good sign that it's the Lord. <laughs> and there's times, Billy, where I, where I jump on board. But there's other times where I'm like, oh, glory. Mm, mm-mm. You ever had those moments? Those mm-mm moments? Because if you ask me, will you, will you pray about this? And I'll say, nope, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. There was a lady who has had something come in. It was a faith lady. Had something come in, and she's paralyzed now and can't speak. And so my immediate thought was, let's jump on it and use the name of Jesus just real quick, right? Well, the problem with that is that I'm, I'm trying to pitch a, a Hummer to, um, to Rory, and he wants a 67 GTO. GTO means get to the office. Now, now, hear me now. This is important. Because this is why we don't get our prayers answered a lot of times. This is why you hear Christians saying, I'm going to be okay, and they're not. See, how many, how many times do we have to see things, people fail, for us to realize maybe we need to go back in and tweak it again? We're going to have the glory fall, but it comes to a degree and then it stops. Why do we keep doing that? Because what is the definition of Insanity. Hoping for what? Different result. So don't be afraid of your problems anymore. Your problems are telling you what's cooking in your life. <laughs> wow, did we take the offering already? I hope we did. No, I'm just, I'm just talking to you. I mean, come on. I, I mean, I want you to think about this for a minute. If I'm dealing with something and it's not going away, what do I have to do? Is maybe the Holy Ghost just sitting there holding me? Because I tell you, the Holy Ghost is a lot stronger than, uh, and I'm not talking to sickness and disease. He's not sickness and disease. He's not lack. He's none of that. But he will slow you down whenever he knows that you're about to go to the wrong place. Do you tell your kids not to touch the stove? They're heading for the stove. Are you going to try to grab their hand? What if they keep going for the stove and, and, you, and you miss it once? And they touch the stove. Whose fault is that? So on this person, as we were praying, I saw that trauma had come in, and she had a fractured soul. You ever had something fractured? How well can you run on a fractured leg? <laughs> you guys like pickleball. How, how, how good can you, can you play pickleball if you have a fractured elbow? You can't. 
Well, how could a how could a soul get fractured? How could a soul get fractured? Let's take that on. Trauma. Trauma. Got smacked in the head. I watched a, a reel. I didn't mean to. I was trying to get to a gospel song, and this reel just jumped in there so fast. <laughs> it's not my fault. But I saw a horse kick a dog in the head. The dog is, is messing with the horse, right? And the horse just goes, bam. And the dog is sitting there frozen going, Rrr. and I thought, that, ho- that dog's not going to be normal ever again. I don't know what that has to do with this, but anyway. Fractured soul. <laughs> Fractured soul. So what do you have to do? Put it back together again first. How can I, get, how can I help somebody if, if I can't get them back together again or the Holy Spirit can't get them back together again? So if you run in real quick in situations and just start slapping juice on it and it doesn't work, what do we do? We're going to go to the next one. We're going to go to the next one. We're going to go to the next one. See, Jesus didn't do that. He says, I came to do what? You're my father. I came to do good. In fact, turn to, turn to Acts 10.38. Is everybody okay? Yes. I like the deep stuff. I like the deep stuff. I like to know why it works. Like the guy today, um, he was a wrestling coach from 61 to 83, Jerry Quinlan. And his, uh, his record was 116, 12, and 2 or something like that. He had an 88.5% winning average. I don't want to wrestle any of his people. He had 20 state champions, four, four 20 state champion wrestlers, four state championships, two runner-ups. He understands what he's doing. He understands the science of that game. Like him or not, but uh, who's the coach for Alabama? I just forgot. He, did, he just retired. Nick Saban, as much as I don't like Nick Saban because they beat Oklahoma in 2005, <laughs> they were lucky that game. <laughs> but you can't deny a guy that has six national championships. Is he doing something right? He's got a system. So is the Holy Spirit putting us in the system? Is he? So I told you guys a story two weeks ago. We'll, we'll go there in a minute. I told you a story two weeks or three weeks ago, how I had overeaten and didn't listen to the Holy Spirit and I'm eating Doritos, and I'm eating Cheetos, and I'm eating those sausage things. Do you, do you remember, Mr. Sim, remember Homer Simpson? How uh, Apu would go, Mr. Simpson, and he had that, he had that, he had that, he had that rolling wiener on the, on the thing, and he'd pull it, and he'd go. Tch. You guys don't watch, you guys don't watch The Simpsons? Okay, well, anyway. <laughs> oh, you're sanctified. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> here, Tyler, you preach. Well, I was even eating one of those, one of those nasty-looking things early in the morning because I was hungry, so I justified it, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> and Sharon's not eating any of that stuff. She's looking at me like, you're crazy. So later, when, whenever we go to the Mexican restaurant in Meeker, and I'm sick, and the Holy Spirit says to me, my, his answer to me is, go get baking soda. Everybody look at me. It's to, it's to, it's to go get baking soda. Because what does baking soda do when your stomach is not acting right? It neutralizes the acid. Well, when you've been eating junk all day, and the Holy Spirit tells you to go get baking soda, what does that mean? Oops. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Oops. So that night, she had a real attack, and I didn't. She, she, She had a real attack, and mine was from disobedience. See, there's a difference there. So if you lumped us together, you'd be wrong, wouldn't you? Because I knew better. Come on. All right, so look here. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. I want you to see this. I want you to see this powerful word right here. I want you to see this powerful word. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, just like he anointed you guys, and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. The good was he listened to what Holy Spirit told him. I know that's different for some of you guys, but it's true. He listened to what Holy Spirit said to him to do. And then in that, now he's lined up, because let me ask you this question. 
if I line up with, the, with, with Jesus, right, if I'm doing good because I'm lined up with Jesus, am I aligned up here? Am I aligned up with this? 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 You ever heard of Charles, uh, who's that, who that faith theater? Charles Price. Remember Charles Price? Everybody heard of Charles Price? He had 300,000 people healed back in uh, 30s. You want to hear a crazy story? <laughs> These two people had their legs grow out in one of his services. That's pretty cool. You know what he said? He would say, are you going to be healed tonight? And if he said yes, he goes, you're going to get it. And so you're going to get healed tonight? Well, I hope Jesus comes. You're not going to get it. Come on. Isn't that crazy? I read that whole book just to find that out. So Jesus, what, here's Jesus' secret. Right here. I came to seek those who were, who were, who were lost, right? Okay, hallelujah. All right, that's all I got. Has everybody survived? So let me ask you this question. I got more. <laughs> you guys are new, right? We'll be praying for you. Lock the doors real quick before they get out. This is a good night. <laughs> so, um, oh, come on, Brain. John, you're loving this, aren't you? John Raven, he loves this when I do this. Fractured soul. Thank you, Kenny. You've redeemed yourself from that, from that New Testament comment. No, no, no. This is an actual thing where somebody's actually been hurt. I'm talking emotionally got hurt. Hurt, really hurt. Because we pray for these people and we can't seem to get them out of that cycle because we haven't put the soul back together again. Go to Hebrews 6, verse 7 and 8. I'll show you. Hmm. I don't know if I want to go. Do you, do you guys really want to go down this one? We're going to kick over a sacred cow so big. <laughs> I don't think you're ready. No, I don't know. I don't know. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it. Because if you, if you take this back into, so you've got to put everything back into context. So as you go back into context, the end of verse 5, he talks about the difference between good and evil, which is, which is real simple. I'm either going to hear God or I'm not. And then he rolls into the milk stuff. You remember what the milk stuff was? Raising the dead, praying for the sick, salvation. What else was it? Healings. What's that? Baptisms. Resurrection of the dead, all that kind of stuff. He called that milk. And do you know why that's milk? Because we can, we can compare with each other. We can get in a situation where she got, she got 10 saved. I got 12. Now she's got to go get some more. How many did you raise from the dead? You got three? I got four. <laughs> so now you got this competition going. You can't because you got healed. But outside, out there, you're still seeing. Come on, man. Out, get, get, on this, get on this preaching circuit and see what I'm talking about. I promise you. And I'm talking in a big town, like in Tulsa or Charlotte or somewhere like that, where they're having, Gene can tell you, Karen can tell you, where they're having an event. John and Cherry can tell you, where they're having an event. And tell me there's not competition. <laughs> Give me a break. The only place that, there, there's more competition with preachers than there is in the NFL. We're trying to grow a church talking like this. Man, we ever stop. Okay, everything is real good. Everything is good. It's all, it's all beautiful outside, sunshine, flowers. It's all good. <laughs> okay, look here. So then, so then he's coming all the way down this thing, and he's talking about how Jesus, people, people have walked away, and they've crucified Christ afresh. What is that talking about? Now, before you jump on it, if you take it into context, he's talking about following Jesus or not following Jesus. So if you, if you don't do that, aren't you? If Jesus died on the cross for you and you're not listening to a thing he says, are you honoring anything that was given to you? Anyway, that's a pretty sacred cow. I'm, I'm not going to go any deeper on it. 
Go back to verse 6 for just a second. If they fall away, to renew them again, to repent. Ah, oh, let's, let's move on. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I went down this road. Okay. <laughs> I vowed to stay on one thing this week. Move to the next one. We're, move to seven. You can make a point. Back up for a minute. Go, go back. Tyler wants to make a point. Yes. Lifelong life of disobedience. Double-mindedness. See, the key is to get this to where it's usable, where you can swallow it. And if you guys go, go read it this week. If you have any questions, call Karen and Jean. Okay, next verse. For the, and Sherry. I'm not going to kick, I'm not going to kick Sherry's in on this too. Called Jean and Sherry. His number is... Okay. Oh, dear Lord. For the earth, which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated, receives blessings from God. Can we jump this into the message? Do we have the message on there? Yes. Just kick it to the message for just a second. I want you to see this in the message. <laughs> Thank you. You were wanting to share that. I saw that. You were going nuts for a minute there, bro. It's freaking me out. <laughs> I got this. I got it. <laughs> Don't you love it when you have something? Have you, ever, have you ever baited somebody like you're talking about something and then you're just yeah, waiting until they get there? That What's that? So do you know how long I'm yes, that? you have battled for a long time. Thank God I never did. <laughs> no. <laughs> how many of you got born again because of that scripture? Over and over. How many, how, about, how many got born again 60 times because of that? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, but that scripture, that scripture scared me to no end, man. Oh, my gosh. Is it? Woo. <laughs> I'm not preaching anymore. I'm done. <laughs> okay, the, okay, look here. Parched ground that soaks up the rain and then, and then produces an abundance of carrots and corn for its gardener gets God's well done. I like that. Because we want to create stuff that we get a well done from God, right? And this is not talking about meat, John. Next verse. Go ahead, go, go ahead and keep it in the message. But if it produces weeds and thistles, it's more likely to get cussed out. <laughs> and who's cussing it out? Yes, you're right. Rory's like this. Me. So, <laughs> woo! This is gonna make a great reel. Uh, feels, <laughs> feels like that are burned and not harvested. That is God's grace. What if that thing did produce? What would you have? No, 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 time out. We're talking on the thistles, Tyler. But thanks for being positive. But if it produces weeds and thistles, it's more likely to get cussed out. Feels like that or burned and not harvested. Have you, I remember going to my grandmother's, and she had those, remember those green stickers that lay out like a, like, it's, like, it's like a piece of carpet, kind of like out there, and they're full of, they got little sticker things in them, and, you're gonna, and you don't have any shoes on because it's the 60s, right? And she said to go out and do something, so you're, so you're going to, it's easier to do this than it is to put on shoes. I don't know why. <laughs> I was honest. Stick. What do they call those flat stickers? Goat weeds. Yeah, goat weeds. Oh yeah, dude, they're flat. Like they just lay out like that, and they're just full of stickers. I mean, they are bad news. And you know, have you ever gone out there? You're going to go out. Yeah, it's a three-sided sticker. No matter what happens, you get it right. So you're barefooted. You're going to go out to somewhere, and so you're kind of negotiating through. And what happens? Boom! And then trying to get out what happens. Boom! And then, and then what does your mother do for the next two weeks? She takes that little bitty pen, needle, right? And she cleans, out the, she, she, she cleans out the thorn. That's what he's talking about here. That's why you don't harvest it. Because if you harvest that sticker, that's why a lot of things God burns up. Let's go back to John 15. Remember what he said? 
Do you, do you guys remember what John 15 said? What does it say? He cuts the branches and burns them. What's he doing here? That's why he's not harvesting them. Do you know why God is not harvesting stuff? To save your bacon. It's not working. Thank God. <laughs> Seriously. Hmm. I can't wait to get a, have our first conference and get all these other preachers in. And go for it. What do you think? Hey, if you can't wig them. So who here has had something not work? Raise your hand. Who here got frustrated about it? Who here tried to say, come over to my house tonight. I'm going to harvest what what I grew, and we're going to put it in a salad. (laughs) Could you imagine what your friends would do the first time that they... Would you go back to their house, Landon, and eat with them? Who's going to eat a sticker salad? <laughs> Seriously. So, so God... So the minute God burns up our field, God doesn't love me. <laughs> oh, I got to stop. Dear, I did not mean to go to Hebrews 6. I did not mean to... I was going to digest it a little bit longer, Sherry, before I preached it. <laughs> But I saw that the dash. I ran it past Karen, and we were kicking the walls and jumping on the table. That's what it means. We saw it. Isn't it cool when you see something? That's exactly because the Bible keeps. Oh my gosh! Look at that verse. Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? Mark four thirteen. Who here is brand new and doesn't understand this parable? Well, who here does not understand this parable? You don't understand it. Would you give John a book, please? <laughs> give him Modeling Jesus. Does anybody else not understand the parable? Okay. Parable of the soul and the seed. Mm-hmm. What it means. Yeah. Give John a book. Modeling Jesus. You do too understand the parable. You want a free book. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter two gets it. So the next book's about yielding. There you go, John. You're going to teach next week, by the way. So the next book's about yielding. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I don't want to freak him out. The next book's about yielding. So yielding is, it is a lifestyle that is so productive that you're not harvesting stickers anymore, but you're harvesting carrots and beans, and you hear what Holy Spirit wants you to do, and you go do it. And here's, the, here's, the, here's when you know that you're doing it. You don't go beat yourself up when it doesn't work. If you're beating yourself up, you are in the wrong spot, man. You got to go back to zero. Let's go get the kids if you want to. It's 8 o'clock. Gosh, I'm out of stuff. Oh, thank you. Please pray for online audience. Hello, online audience. How are you? (laughs) So, Father, we just lift up the online audience. If you have issues, call Karen Duvall, not me this week. No. (laughs) I'm so zipped, man. That's crazy. Brad Clymer at his outpouring, 307-200-0228. We love you. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast today. I'm glad that you joined us. For more information, reach out to us at 307-200-0228. That's our church line. Or you can go online to hisoutpouring.com to get more information. And you can also reach us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok at His Outpouring Church. If you're in Casper, Wyoming, make sure you come join us. You'll find us at East Ridge Mall off of Center Court. So thanks again. Have a great week.